its little halo as the polonium decayed and made its little halo in the rock, if the rock was hot, the halo would disappear. If the rock were already cold, it would leave a ring behind. And these rings are found in rock all over the world. And Robert Gentry did a lot of research on this and said, folks, these rocks were never a hot molten mass because this is polonium that is original. It's not a daughter product of something else. And it's leaving a ring behind. This rock was never hot. And as soon as his research, people began to realize his research goes against the Big Bang Theory, they, he lost his funding, of course. OK, next question. What about global warming? Is it true the Earth is heating up and we've got to save the environment and you know save Mother Earth and kill all the whale or kill all the babies and save all the whales? Well, there's a good book, several good books about about uh, uh, global warming. I think there's a whole lot more to this story than we realize. There's no question man has abused the environment, okay? But I don't think the government's the one to fix it. Um, there's a book called Facts Not Fear. You can get through Derry Brownfield's ministry in uh, Missouri. Radio uh, R12, which is what's used in refrigerants for air conditioners, it sinks. It doesn't rise. Try it. If you can get some R12 and poke a little hole in the can and put a match under it, it'll put the match out as it flows over it. It's not going up. Um, a volcano can produce thousands of times more ozone-destroying material than man has produced in the history of our, of our, of our modern world, okay, since R12 has been used for refrigerants. What's happened now, we've got a different one. I think it's R132 used in air conditioners, and the cost has gone way up. This is part of the plan to bankrupt the world, I think, you know, get everybody in debt to the New World Order folks. So no, I, it's silly what's happened with air conditioning and, uh, and environmental uh, scares that are going around. I think the real purpose of the environmental movement is to abolish private property, which is Karl Marx's first plank on the Communist Manifesto. They want you to have to get a permit to cut down a tree on your own property. And that's another long, interesting uh, question about permits. We cover that a lot more on our uh, college class, CSC 104, I believe, of our college classes we offer here through our ministry. Next question. Doesn't the Green River Formation prove the Earth is millions of years old? Uh, no, it doesn't. The Green River in uh, northwestern United States has a lot of layers of rock around it. This is called the Green River Formation. If you take two pieces of glass with different colored sand in between, like you can buy at the mall, and you flip it over, it automatically sorts into many different layers. If you only have two densities of, of sand in there, the black and the white are two different densities, why does it make hundreds of layers? Well, you can take rock from the Green River Formation, which has millions of layers, grind it up to powder, sprinkle it in moving water, and it'll sort into hundreds of layers again. Here you have only two densities, and yet it makes hundreds of layers. So it's not proof these layers are annual deposits or anything else. It's proof there was moving water. Actually, when they drilled into this rock in the Green River Formation, they find what's called an event horizon, a layer of ash. Sometimes between two event horizons, they find a number of layers, and they go over and drill again, and they find up to 30% difference, 35% different number of layers. It can't be annual layers, okay? The Green River does not prove the Earth is millions of years old. Next question. What about the Mars rock? This article says, are we really Martians? Can't believe they cut down a tree to print that in a newspaper. <laughs> anyway. The Mars lander on uh, the lunar landed on and tested Martian soil. The sophisticated equipment did not even find a trace of a germ, according to NASA. This is the rock that became the big uh, news article years ago. This rock was in a closet in uh, NASA had found. It, somebody had found it near the South Pole, and they said it might be a meteor from Mars. This little bitty line right there was what this stir was all about. They said, wow, this might prove there was bacteria or life on Mars. Well, the problem is Mars is a long ways from the Earth, okay? The closest it ever gets is about uh, 50 million miles. That's the closest it gets. If you shrank the Earth and Mars down and made up a couple of tomatoes to get the right scale here, Earth would be a 4-inch tomato and Mars would be a 2-inch tomato. The closest they get at that scale is about a third of a mile apart going around the sun. The idea that something hit Mars and knocked a chunk off and it flew all the way to Earth and landed is silly. Chances of that is real close to zero, okay? Here's some facts to consider about the Mars rock. Number one, they claim it came from Mars. We don't know that. Number two, they claim it broke off 16 million years ago and landed 13,000 years ago. What did this bacteria eat? How did it survive the impact? How did it survive the vacuum of space? How did it survive the entry, the, the re-entry, where it would have certainly burned? the freezing for 13,000 years. 
A NASA-funded team did the research, and the NASA grant money was stalled in Congress at the time this was going on. NASA had to find something to make themselves look useful, and so they called up this Mars rock, and the grant money was immediately released as soon as the Mars rock finding was announced. And then shortly thereafter, they had said, oops, it's not really a bacteria. This is a normal carbonate crystal that forms. It's a simple geologic process. It's not a, not a life at all. But they kept the grant money, of course. <coughs> so that was the real purpose of it. The Bible says Eve is the mother of all living. I do not think there's life on any other planets except Earth. I couldn't prove that, but anybody that thinks there is is arguing from the negative position. Nobody has seen any life anywhere else. We know of eight other planets here in our solar system. There's no life on those, so I think we're it, folks. This is it. God did this just for us. Next question. What about theistic evolution? Couldn't God use evolution to get us here? I was in a debate one time, and afterwards this man came up to me and he said, Boy, you don't give much room to us folks who believe God used evolution, do you? I said, no, sir, don't give you any room at all. I think you got a retarded God. So if somebody says, could God use evolution? I say, well, that depends on what you mean by God. It's certainly not the God of the Bible. Um, <clears throat> the God that would use evolution or need to use evolution is cruel, he's wasteful, he's stupid, and he's deceitful. He's not the God of the Bible. It's not the character of God to use misfits and blind chance and death. My God gets it right first time. Jacques Monod, a Nobel Prize winner, said, Natural selection is the blindest, most cruel way of evolving new species and more and more complex and refined organisms. He said the struggle for life and elimination of the weakest is a horrible process against which our whole modern ethics revolts. An ideal society is a non-selective society, one where the weak is protected, which is ex exactly the reverse of the so-called natural law. He said, I'm surprised that a Christian would defend the idea that this is the process which God more or less set up to have evolution. I agree, Jacques. Christians ought to be ashamed of themselves if they're saying God used evolution to get us here. That's a cruel God. Uh, David Hull says, whatever the God of implied by evolutionary theory and the data of natural history may be, he is not the Protestant God of waste not, want not. He's also not a loving God who cares about his productions. He's not even the awful God portrayed in the book of Job. The God of Galapagos is careless, wasteful, indifferent, almost diabolical. He is certainly not the sort of God to whom anyone would be inclined to pray. I agree. It's not the God of the Bible. Darwin's philosophy of evolution is summed up here in his book. He said, From the war of nature, from famine and death, the most exalted object we are capable of conceiving, namely the production of higher animals, directly follows. Darwin thought that war, suffering, famine, and death was a wonderful process because that's how we get evolution. Well, Darwin's right. If his theory was right, that's how it would work. It's, he's wrong. It didn't happen. And that's not the way God would do it. My Bible says God's work is perfect. He does it right. The God that would use this evolution is wasteful. He's deceitful. The clear evidence shows there was a creation, a very wise creator designed this place. So I would say this is not the God of the Bible. It's not uh, the kind of God you'd want to worship. God makes things perfect. He said he told it by his word. He made it in six days, Exodus chapter 20. And he rested on the seventh day. The Bible clearly teaches six-day creation, one day of rest. And Hebrews tell us his, his work was finished from the foundation of the world. He was done. He's not letting things evolve slowly. He finished it in six days, and he rested on the seventh day, Hebrews chapter 4. It says he ended his work <coughs> in Genesis chapter 2. He ended his work on the seventh day. It's over with. It's done. It's not ongoing. There is no evolution happening today at all. Romans chapter 5 tells us that death came because of man's sin. 1 Corinthians 15 says man brought death into the world. Genesis 1 says God made man in his image. Any other teaching besides that is heresy. So if someone wants to teach, you know, that God used evolution, they're a heretic, according to Scripture. They're not teaching what the Scripture clearly teaches. Lastly, that's a retarded God. If he has to use evolution, it means he doesn't know what he wants. He's just playing around blind chance. It's not the God of the Bible. So, and that would nullify the need for the death of Christ. And there's no evidence for evolution anyway. So why would we take a perfectly good Bible, which has never been proven wrong, and try to compromise it with a dumb theory that's never been proven right. There is no evidence for evolution, so stick with the Bible. The Bible's absolutely correct as it's written.